Hello everybody and welcome to uh, my Discord, or not my Discord channel, my Twitch channel and probably YouTube video. So just to tell you what's going on, Hairbrain Schemes has decided to do a creative jam, which is like a game jam, but just follow some creative pursuit. Uh, we get an entire work day and a half to work on it, and then we're going to have a half day of presenting. Some people are doing cooking, other people are doing sculpting or crocheting or model building. And some people are working on video games like a game jam. But I decided to work on learning how to mod RimWorld. Um, then there was a little bit of interest in that. So uh, I think we have like four or five members that are going to be joining us eventually. And um, so in order for me to kind of show them the ropes on how to mod RimWorld, I have to learn how to do it. So that's what tonight's all about. Tomorrow is when we're starting. Uh, since I'm on the East Coast, I'll get a little, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll get a little bit of head start before they uh, get into the office. But what I'll be working through is... the play gun tutorial and, oh, there we go sorry uh my downstairs computer is my remote computer or is my development computer so a couple of different things going on there uh, let's see so rimworld forums i'm uh, gonna go to mods help and Jersell's uh, How to Make a RimWorld Mod Step-by-Step. Step. This is uh, was a really great mod way back in the day. It's a little bit out of date, but uh, I worked through it off stream once with my daughter. Thank you, Echo Sky. Uh, and uh, found all the, all, all the things that made it not... Uh, all the little things that were, were gotchas. So we'll go through those. And the if you're new into modding, one of the things that I'd like to say is just uh, one of the one of the best skills you can have is persistence and a willing to willingness to dig for your own information. Um, if modding is a very difficult pursuit because uh, oftentimes you're not looking at the full picture in a game; you only get to see small pieces of it, and you have to kind of make guesses on what the developer was doing and you don't get a direct line to those people to talk to them and ask them questions, right? Uh, so two things. Uh, usually modding communities are, are super helpful, uh, but they're only helpful if you come into it with the right attitude. If you come in with kind of an entitled demanding attitude, nobody there is getting paid to put up with your BS. <laughs> so uh, be nice, be polite. Try to do stuff on your own and then ask for help once you've been digging for a little while. Uh, that said, if anybody has any questions while the stream is going on, I'll be happy to answer them, even though my knowledge is very limited. So I'm a game developer at Hairbrain Schemes. Uh, I'm the, I was the tools engineer on Battletech, and since then I have migrated over to being on the core tech team, which is kind of like the... Uh, the, the low-level code that gets shared between projects, stuff like logging or um, a message system and, and things like that. So without further, let me look at my notes real quick, see if there was anything else I wanted to talk about. What, why is that up? Go away. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, some tools that we're going to need. Uh, I've already got those, but some tools I think we're going to need are uh, Notepad++. I'm going to just take some notes here. Um, you don't actually need Notepad++, but I highly recommend it. You need some sort of text editor to edit the XML files. Um, 
that are here. Uh, you'll need Visual Studio. Uh, you can probably get, um, what is it, Community Edition or something like that? I can't remember what it's called these days. Uh, I'll, I'll look that up and, and post some links in the, in the YouTube video later, but uh, Community Edition maybe. If you don't have a professional license, um, and probably IL Spy, and you can get that through the Windows Store. All right, so this is a text editor. Or ID of your choosing. In the store. Uh, so Notepad lets us uh, edit the text files. Visual Studio is going to let us write C-sharp code and compile those to DLLs. Chooting. Uh, IL Spy will let us dig into compiled DLLs and look at some of the code that was used to generate those. Um, one of the things I want to talk about first is uh, RimWorld itself. So RimWorld is, first of all, it's a really cool game. The One of the things that it has done is it's taken data-driven development to like 11. They, uh, they data drive almost everything here. Uh, this, this data that, that's here in core is, um, it, it, it's what drives the games. Basically like the core game is effectively a mod from all of the data files that he has. So, uh, let's look at just some some random defs here to show you what we're going to be looking into. Uh, thing defs. Let's go to items. Items. So we have food. We have artifacts. We have unfinished items. So let's open up food. Let's always use this. So by default, um, Windows likes to open up XML files inside a web browser, but let's hold down shift and go down to open with. And if you see notepad plus plus, that's great. If not, choose another app. If you don't see it on this list, go down to more apps and then select always use this to open the XML files. You'll, if, unless you want it something else for some reason, but uh, if you're if you're wanting to mess around with modding and stuff, this is just going to save you some time. Now, when we double click on things, it'll just open up the XML files in Notepad plus ones. So, uh, an XML file is a file format. It uh, was popular in web development and on the Microsoft Tech Stack. Uh, stands for Extensible Markup Language, but the uh, uh, the other like popular data file format right now is JSON. Uh, th they're they're a different format, but they serve the same purpose. So pretty much everything that's in RimWorld, like all of the stuff, all of the data that that drives the game, exists on these XML files that are just here for for you per perusal and to mess with. So um, let's let's look down here for something interesting. All right, a simple meal. So because of this, we can change the simple meal value to 15,000 if we felt like it. That will really unbalance the game because you can just make a few simple meals and then buy everything that a, uh, that a merchant has to offer. But the, the cool part about this is you can make your own, you can make your own stuff like the, the recipe for the meal is in here. Um, basically, all the all the jobs are in there. All the buildings, all the animals, all the pawns, everything. So, um, the I, I'm a big proponent uh, proponent of data driven development. So, uh, and R RimWorld does this does an excellent job of it. Let me go back to chat. Antique Raven Core is one of my top three mods. <laughs> yes, sir. Welcome to the stream, Antique Raven. So, the 
Um, lost my train of thought. So that's what uh, that's what XML files are, and that's what we're going to be messing with mostly, uh, with a little bit of C sharp mixed in. Where'd my other notes go? Lost them again. Close this window. No, don't close that window. There we go. Mm hmm. XML. All right. Now I think we can get into the actual modding. So if you're if you're new to modding, there's a couple of skills that uh, uh, you may or may not have. If you know C sharp programming, awesome. If you know how to navigate an XML file, awesome. Um, if not, that's not something I'm going to be able to teach you in like an hour or two. So there's, but there's a couple of good, there's tons of resources online to start learning that, uh, learning how to program is not an easy task. So, uh, but like I said before, persistence and it's a skill like any other, and you can ask for help along the way. So go for it. So the, I'm going to post this link in chat. Thanks, Bradifer. Bronzite, welcome to the stream. So that's the forum post that we're going through. This was written five years ago by Drusel, and it was, uh, I, I worked through this a long time ago, and it just kind of, open the door for, for modding. Uh, once I started getting into it, uh, I actually got a job here at HBS, so it just kind of fell off my radar for a long time, but I always thought this, uh, I always thought this post was just great because it just walks you through step-by-step step of all the different things and kind of shows you how to get started in addition to, um, in addition to, getting a, a working mod for a, a simple concept. So the point of this mod, we're going to be making a plague gun. And what that's going to do is when a bullet hits, uh, the plague gun's going to fire plague bullets. And when it shoots a, uh, when it hits a victim, there's going to be a small chance that it will, there'll be a chance that it will inflict a part of a, a plague uh, health differential. Um, I think they're called he diffs in the uh, in the XML, and basically a health differential is any any kind of data or condition that separates a healthy pawn from a non healthy pawn. So a scar is a he diff, um, an infection, a disease, a missing limb, uh, all those things are, are considered health differentials or he diffs. So we are going to make a. Um, uh, a plague gun. Uh, let's see here. Required items. We got Notepad plus plus. He also suggests Atom or Sublime text. Visual Studio Community. DN Spy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and recommend IL Spy from the Windows Store if you don't have it. Easy peasy. All right. First things first. We need to get to our mods folder. So where are we at? First thing. There she is. All right. This is our RimWorld folder. We can get to that by right clicking on RimWorld, going to manage, browse local files, or you can go to properties. And local files, browse. Bloop. And that should open up a, a Windows Explorer to your place. Uh, inside RimWorld, there's a bots directory. So we're going to go in there. And I believe he said we're going to need to make an about folder. And then I just, sorry, went kind of fast. So then go into the about folder and make a new uh, text document about.xml. Now, one of the things about this. Uh, one of the things about this tutorial is it's five years old. The game has been, uh, this was written in pre-release. So before, uh, uh, before even early access was out, I think. 
So there's some things that are wrong here, but I'm going to go through the tutorial like normal and just work through those problems because I work through those off stream so we can just see what they look like. If anyone else is following along at home and going, hey, I did this thing that he said and it looks exactly right. Uh, this is a standard thing at the top of a XML file. Basically, it just tells people that are reading the XML, what the encoding style is, what version of XML we're using, all that fun stuff. So he wants us to make an about and then test mod play gun. I'm going to call this X play gun just to personalize it. X target version. Uh, this is this is one of the things that's wrong, so I'm just going to leave this as target version 0.17.0. .0. Uh, this mod adds a play gun, a weapon that has a chance to give your enemies the plague. Special thanks to Jercel for making this tutorial. And then we'll put a link to that. Bam. And I'll go ahead and get this description there. Shablamo. All right, so this is an XML file. If you're not familiar with um, XML, it's very simple. Basically, there are uh, XML elements. This is a this 2019, but the modding framework is still a bit different now than it was then. Yeah. Uh, and that's the problem with uh, trying to hit a move in target as a game still out and still being actively developed on. Uh, the tutorials get a little bit out of date and there's no real incentive for the uh, person who wrote the first one to come back in and uh, and correct it other than just they want to. <laughs> so, um, so anyways... Um, XML elements, so basically anything. So we can call this, um, let's call this animal. And so this signifies an animal element. It's empty, it doesn't have anything in it. Uh, maybe it has a name. Fred. Maybe it has a type. Goldfish, but pr pretty much you have an open tag, an open element tag, and a closed tag, and anything that's in there are child elements of that. Uh, there's also an attribute, so we could have um, like ID equals twenty-seven or something like that, and this data format. Uh, is easily serializable and deserializable into classes and stuff, and we're going to get more into that. But when we see this stuff uh, moving around, that's kind of what that's kind of what we're looking at. So this is mod metadata, data about our mod. Um, and what else? Uh, there's a name for our mod, uh, author, target version, blah blah blah. All kinds of fun stuff like that. So, what else do we have going on? That was step one, easy peasy. Uh, pretty much, he's walking us through to uh, to make the about XML, so our mod will show up in the uh, in the game. So save image as we need a preview image. This uh, because of the uh, because of the forum software. It has this weird, crazy extension. Just swap that out to all files. Ooh, rise of TMS diff. What else do we have? Uh, we'll call this uh, preview. I think you wanted us to do preview.png. And this, no, this will go right here in our about folder. Shablamo. So we've added the about, we've added the, the play gun PNG, 
And I think at this point our game would show up or our mod would show up. It's not doing anything. There's nothing here, but uh, let's go ahead. Actually, yeah, since we're, since we're working on the about, let's go ahead and fire up RimWorld and see what's going on. So we can walk through the first little out of date bit of this tutorial. Another excellent skill for modding is uh, reading <laughs> and it didn't show up. Why didn't it show up? Maybe because it doesn't have anything in it. Hmm. So we have RimWorld mods, anything else? Base robots, where are these coming from? Is this not the right? <sighs> Do I have two copies of RimWorld installed on my thing? Because I don't see these other ones. Maybe those are from the workshop. All right, part of what we're gonna see on this video is live action debugging, reading documentation, and uh, what else? trying to figure out what's going on. So we do have this place mods here. Is there an open? Yeah. All right, quit the OS. Let's see, let's just go a little bit further and see if it shows up. Um, so let's make a desk folder in our mods directory. That might be a requirement for mods to show up. Oh, that was one reason. So do, 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 I wasn't following the tutorial all the way. Plague gun. There we go. Now we're cooking. Reading comprehension, valuable skill. So we have the about XML, we've got preview. Let me go ahead and don't keep that in the editor. Close this guy too. And then we can open up our about XML since we're gonna have to mess with that. All right. I might still complain that, hey, there's, a, there's an empty mod here. Nope, didn't complain. X play gun. Go ahead and run that. Auto sort mods. The order in which mods are applied can affect the game. Like if you're messing with the with the core files, then you'll have to. Uh, then you might want to apply that stuff beforehand, or maybe after. I don't know the order of operations for this but sometimes the order of mods matter like if a mod is dependent on another mod like the multiplayer mod is dependent on harmony but harmony needs to come before core so there's this little auto sort mods button which is really nice so we've turned on x plague gun for game versions none that's part of the reason why it's uh complaining at us now it's going to try to load our mod And there's going to be a problem with the about.xml. Uh, target version field is obsolete. Use supported version instead. And it says, hey, here's how you here's how you would do that. Example, get one of these. So instead, our Instead of target version this, we're going to have supported versions, and then I think it needs a... Okay, no. 
supported versions comes here. And this, I think we're currently in 1.3. So we support versions 1.3 of RimWorld. This will be the first version of our mod. So there we go. Uh, what else is it complaining about? Just because we fixed one error doesn't mean that was the only thing. So let's keep looking. Uh, Playgun is missing package ID and about. All right, let's do that. So a package ID is going to look like that. I forgot the less than there, so I'll put that in there. So, next name. We'll call this uh, ek dot plague gun dot zero 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 one. I don't know if you have to have a format like that, but it suggested one. Uh, maybe we'll go ek tech games. All right, so we, now we have our package ID, we have our supported versions. Uh, da, da, da. Playgun did not load any content because we don't have any content. Player's username is Ek. Okay, cool. And I think that'll get rid of those errors. Uh, we'll fire it up one more time just to be sure. Let me check my Discord, see if any of my team members have showed up yet. Nope, not yet. All right. Cool, no errors. All right, let's go on to the next step. So what are defs? They're basically the data items of all the games. Make a new thing def. In, uh, so we're going to make a new defs folder. Playgun defs not in the about folder so that's what i did the first time i had like about and then i had play guns there but no we want defs i'm not sure if defs is a special folder um i suspect that it is it's just going to look for that since we don't have like a manifest then basically there's a layout for um a, a folder structure where RimWorld knows to look in the defs folder for extra data files. So we need to, let's see, since file will contain the blueprint. So we need to find the, uh, the thing def for a revolver. The reason why is, uh, we need to, we need to have like all of the data for a, um, for a given weapon uh, specified. So we're gonna use the uh, an existing gun as just kind of a shortcut instead of having to define all that data. So important skill here, important um, digging for information. So I'm gonna hit Shift Control F here. Uh, I have already specified this directory. Um, so if you go into RimWorld data core, this is where all the uh, all the deaths for all the games are, or for for this for the core part of the game. There's also one directory here for the uh, for each expansion that's come out. Um, so you could keep it here at core or here at this level if you wanted to, but basically. We're gonna do a find in files, all XML files, and we're gonna look for revolver. That's what that's the gun that uh, Drissel wanted to base this off of. Bloop. So this is now we have to dig through and find a couple of things. So pawn kind special. I think this is a list of things that pawns are allowed to like. That's not the actual gun itself. Def name bullet revolver. I think that's for the bullet and gun revolver. I think that's for the gun. 
Uh, so yeah, I think that's where we'll need to go. And that's in the ranged industrial XML file. So yeah, that, I think that's our, I think that's our candidate here. So we're going to copy defs. I see why he, he wanted to do this one because bullet revolver and gun revolver up at the top. So we need defs. We're going to copy down through thing def. We're going to copy down through the second thing def for the gun. Copy that. And then we haven't made our new defs yet. So let's see. Needs to be an XML file. And if you just did this, then you might uh, think, hey, that's pretty cool. But this um, this open defs tag hasn't been closed yet. So let's go ahead and close that. Was it def or was it defs? Defs. That's important. Capitalization matters and spelling matters. Otherwise, the computer doesn't know what the heck you're talking about. So we have a bullet and we have a gun revolver. But these are the exact same things. We haven't changed anything yet. So let's go over to the tutorial and see what he wants us to change. So he wants us to... Let's see, this file can contain the blueprints. Actually, we'll fill out our XML file by copying those existing thing desks over. It's often best to use the XML attribute parent name. Uh, I don't 100% know what's going on, but I have a pretty good idea. So this parent name, I'm guessing, is a base class or base data. The base bullet, uh, all bullets would inherit from this and uh, inherit lots of properties and actions and, and just data about that thing so that you don't have to specify yes this is bullet yes it travels here yes it, it looks like this um so let's see he wants us to change the def name and the label one of the things he recommends is all of your all of your def name should have some sort of prefix to them so that they don't overlap. I'm just copying and pasting this here to see what he had. So this is bullet revolver. Let's go to, let's call this ick bullet plague gun. And this will be a plague bullet. I'll call it a plague gun bullet. That probably will what else did he want us to do? And then oh sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought there. I don't think I finished it. So have a uh, have like a prefix for the things that you make. Only uh, to keep collisions from happening because if if you made a uh, a grain or if you made an m16 and someone else made an m16 then those things would collide and, and step on each other from if if somebody had both those mods so let's see we have gun revolver we'll have gun plague gun and because i'm changing these def names from the tutorial, I'll have to make sure and reference those appropriately. Lowercase, play gun. I swear there was a description here that was a little bit cooler than like I remember it saying something like a curious weapon there we go I'll go ahead and put that in here while we're thinking about it curious 
curious weapon notable for its horrible health effects. I'll go ahead and add some more. This weapon can inflict targets. And that should all show up in game for us. Now let's go back up to the top. So, okay, we did that. First out our favorite thing. Then we have to do the deaths thing. All right, I'm doing this a little bit out of order since I spoilered it. Do I not have the thing at the top? I guess not. Gotta have your XML version. Play gun devs. Did he call this file anything special? He called it ranged weapon plague gun XML. So yeah, I called mine plague gun devs.xml. <laughs> so we did that. Use your text editor to find in files to find the revolver. We did that. Use your text editor to find in files. Copy the gun revolver. Did that. Change the def name, labels, and other stats of bullet revolver and revolver in your XML file. All right. So we got to look for revolver everywhere. Uh, this is the graphics data, so I guess that's the image. So if we wanted our own uh, image for the play gun, we could totally make one. A sound, interact revolver, so there's a sound effect with that stuff in it. I don't think we'll change that. Weapon tags, it's a revolver. I think that's fine. Bullet revolver. So this, if you remember how our, I can actually go back over there. underscore so the this def name is the is bullet underscore revolver that's this id that identifies this thing def as uh, uh it, it's a key we can look up this thing def as our thing def with and bullet revolver down here default projectile is bullet revolver this is for the shoot verb this is something you can do with this gun so we changed our def name to this. So we need to make sure that it's shooting the correct projectile. Is there any other revolver stuff we care about? Shot revolver. Yep, we're back up to the, uh, the texture, the graphics for it. All right, so what else do we have going on? Da, da. Connecting XML and C sharp. All right. If it's a custom thing def class, so change the line. So hold on, let's just go through this a little bit more slowly. For the next part of the tutorial, we're going to use C sharp code to create a custom thing def blueprint type, and we're going to create a custom class for our thing to use in game. So right now, this is just a the our bullet is just a. It's just like a standard thing, uh, but we can give it a specific class here with this attribute. We want to, let's see, let's call this tech, tech games dot plague dot thing def plague bullet. So I'm putting a, a namespace on this. Uh, by default, it's plague, but, um, or for this tutorial, he was calling it plague, but I'm going to go ahead and just hook my ectech games up to that. And that's really just an identifier to stop collisions from happening in C sharp. Add three more lines to the thing def before the closing tag. And it, he means the thing def of the bullet. So we have graphics data, projectile. This is the stuff that we're adding here. Oh man, I wanna change all these to tabs instead of two spaces. All right, so this is extra data that we're gonna be um, uh, 
Did we put that to the right spot? Change the line of thing def. Thing def. Class base bullet. Okay, so yeah, that was the class for that. And then thing class. We're gonna do something else down here. I'll go ahead and say ectech games dot plague dot projectile underscore plague bullet. That's weird that there's these two things. I, I wasn't watching closely in my last one, so I'm not sure why there's two different like class definitions here. So we'll dig into that a little bit more when we get that. So this data is letting us drive how the uh, how the game's going to work. Uh, we haven't hooked anything up yet. This is We've put this extra data in here, but right now RimWorld has no idea how to read this. This is stuff that we've invented. But this is this health difference chance is going to start infecting people with the plague at a 5% chance anytime they get hit. Um, right now it doesn't do anything, but that's the goal. Uh, the he diff to add is plague. The thing class is uh, a class that we're going to write. So we're, apparently we're going to write two different classes. I'm not sure why we have thing def plague bullet and projectile plague bullet. Maybe thing class is built in. Maybe that's part of the thing def. I'll have to go have to go look in a little bit later. All right. Open your compiler of choice for C sharp. We're going to use Visual Studio. Uh, let's see, make a new visual C sharp class library. I've already done that. I have, but let's redo it. Uh, let me go ahead and can I copy the path? Yeah, let's go there. Go ahead and get rid of Grimworld Mining. Yeah, okay. Let's get rid of Plague Gun. Uh, this stuff is, I've started a Git repo. I'll put a link to the repo after, after we're done. And Git is a source control repository that basically lets us uh, have version control for this stuff. All right, so let's do Visual Studio. All right, whatever. Let's try to go to here. Yes, let's remove the reference. Okay, I just deleted that. So let's go through the steps. We're gonna create a new project. He wanted us to create a class library. Uh, there's two things here, uh, depending on your, your setup. There's class library .NET standard. Uh, this one's for C sharp. This one's for Visual Basic class for uSQL, there's class library, .NET standard, .NET core, F sharp, all kinds of stuff. We're gonna be doing C sharp and he wanted uh, class library, .NET framework and I've already lost it. There it is, class library, .NET framework. And we'll call this play good. And that's gonna go in there. He says to do .NET Framework 3.5, uh, but RimWorld has since upgraded to RimWorld 4. And if you don't do that, then you'll see a bunch of weird errors. I'm going to go ahead and select 3.5 right now just to show you what those errors would look like. We're not going to see them until later, so we're not going to be sure, hey, is this something I did or that guy did? All right, go to the Build tab and the Project Properties. So project properties, so this is the solution, this is the project. The solution can have multiple projects in it. A project is a project. All right, so go to the properties. You said to go to the build tab and go down to advanced. And for the debugging information, we want none. And what this does is when the, when the project gets built, it will not include any debugging symbols that uh, get pushed to our directory, our, uh, our mod directory. Let's see, in the application tab, 
framework. We're on 20. Go to the build tab, the properties. We did that. Let's go in this directory. Uh, change the output path. I forgot to do that. So output path. He wanted us to make a, an, an assemblies folder. And put that here. So now when we build the, the output from this uh, project is going to be a DLL. And normally that would go into a folder that's uh, sub to this, this directory on disk. It would be like a uh, play gun and bin debug. That's where, that's where it would normally go. Uh, now we're going to have it just directly go to the uh, directly go to the output path. I might change this, uh, but for for group projects, it might be a little bit better to have like a user setting that that says where this output output path exists, because different people might have it installed on different. Um, on different drives and different directories, things like that. But for a solo project, just hard coding it to your thing is fine. So we have done that. And now if I control shift B, let's see if it put it there. Uh, it's the bin debug directory. Okay. Yeah, in our assemblies directory, we just built the plague gun DLL. The only thing in there right now is this empty class that doesn't do us any good. All right, what else does he want us to do? Same window. Change the output path to be RimWorld mods that. In the same window, click the advanced button, change the debugging information to none. We already did that, did that out of order. Sorry about that. In the solution explorer, go to properties and edit the assembly info. Change the name of your assembly and version number as you like. X play gun. Created from says tutorial. And do I still have that? I do not. We'll go ahead and put a link to this. I like giving credit because thank you to yourself for going through all the trouble to make this. Uh, copyright 2022 assembly company. We'll go ahead and say Ectec Games. Assembly configuration. I don't know. Culture. I don't know. Com visible. We have a good anything. We'll call it 1.0.0. All that looks good. In the main option bar at the top, click add reference. All right. This is where we're, we start learning uh, about how to, I'm going to read a few of these in a row. So we're going to add a reference to uh, RimWorld's DLLs. Uh, DLL stands for Dynamic Link Library, and basically it's a, a way for um, programs to, to kind of build their code into separate assemblies and access that code from a, from a program. Um, let's see here. So he wanted us to go into, I've already forgotten how to get there. Project and add reference. So you can come up here and go project, add reference, or you can come down here to the project file and add reference. We'll do it that way. Add reference. And he wants us to go to, he wants us to add a couple of RimWorld DLLs. So we're going to add a, we don't want to add that guy. Oops. Mods, uh, RimWorld. So I believe it's in, I think he says it's in RimWorld WinData. 
Oops. Yeah, he says it's in RimWorld Win data, but it's not there anymore. Instead, it's in RimWorld Win64 data. Under managed, and the two files that he wants are assembly C sharp and Unity Engine DLL. So I selected the first one up there, held down control, selected the second one, click and add. So that'll add them both, or you can add them one at a time, no big deal. All right. So the next thing he wants us to do is assembly C sharp. He wants us to make sure we don't copy local to true. If we did that, what would happen is we'd take RimWorld's uh, DLL, copy it into our project, deploy it into the DLL or into our mods folder, and then there'd be a copy of uh, there'd be like a copy of all the RimWorld methods in the standard DLL, and then because we put a DLL into our assemblies, it would try to import that too, and it would uh, throw all kinds of errors. Um, not gonna walk through that example, but basically we just don't wanna copy a local copy to it. We just always wanna directly point to it. Another added benefit of that is, um, oh, a, a plus and minus. As the game gets updated, then it will always reference that, that file on disk. So we're going to not copy local on assembly C sharp, and we're going to set copy local to false on Unity Engine. Let's go ahead and build for fun. All right, we got success, but assembly C sharp cannot be resolved because it has an indirect dependency on .NET Framework Assembly MS Core Lib System Core, which has a higher version 4.0.0. So this is what happened when we set our project framework to 3.5. I think we go here, or maybe. <laughs> DLL hell is alive and well in 2022. Yeah, it is. All right, so plague, uh, we are, here we go. Tech, tech games .playgun, since that was our, gonna be our namespace. Uh, so yeah, I think we'll change our folders. I think right now it's uh, in our XML files, it's our namespace is something like that. So we'll go back and change that here in a second. Totally won't forget. Target framework, it needs to be four. So basically there were complaints that uh, this error message was saying, hey, these DLLs were targeting .NET 4, but we don't have that. Uh, we don't have version four of the framework on here. So, bam. Now let's go ahead and try to build, close this. One succeeded. All right, so we have no errors, but we also have no, no guts here. So I went to the managed. Assembly C sharp. Oh, one more thing I'm going to tell you now. And then uh, when we were adding this stuff before this uh, reference, there's another assembly that you're also going to want to add, but I'm going to walk through it as if we, uh, there's another one you're going to want to add. And that was, I think it was unity engine dot core module. And also make sure to uh, not copy local, set copy local to false for that. But I wanna walk through the thing as is, that way we can show people what those errors look like. So we added this reference, copy local set to false, copy local set to false, go into the references, delete the yellow triangle references. We don't have any yellow triangle references. And all right, we're good. Open your class one.cs, right click it and rename it to your liking. Well, what's the name of our class gonna be? Thing Def Plague Bullet. All right, and in that case, that's what I will name Thing Def Plague Bullet. Yeah, sure, rename it. So we just renamed the file. Visual Studio was nice enough to rename our class for us. And looks like we're gonna have a couple of 
What do you call him? A uh, couple bits of data here. We're going to have a float and a health differential. All right. So add he diff chance. There's uh, if you remember back in our XML file over here, play gun def. Hectic games. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to play gun as I'm thinking about it. Play gun. Which one is this? This is the thing def plague bullet. So yeah, if you remember, we added this add he diff chance and he diff to add. Uh, the capitalization and the spelling is very important. That's how the the XML file maps to these things. Um, you'll see that these are some unknown types. Like C sharp knows what float is, but it doesn't know what this is. But I hit Control dot, and we can say using verse and using remorse. So these two things are uh, saying that the error message says, hey, there's a couple of, I couldn't find this, this class. I don't know what the heck it is. Uh, but if we tell it control dot using verse and control dot using rim world, then that will get rid of those error messages. A using statement is basically a, uh, Telling it to to include all of that all of that namespaces data, uh, so we don't have to fully qualify it. So we could fully qualify this by saying verse dot he diff and rimworld dot he diff def of. Uh, but since we did our usings, you'll notice that these things are in in gray. All right. Add he diff chance is equal 0.5f, the default chance of adding a he diff. Putting this default here is a little bit weird. I understand it, but um, I could see why you might get confused. You might say, hey, I want to change this to, right now that means a 5% chance. I want to change this to a 100% chance, 1.00. And you change that default. But <laughs> this data over here, like that's the default data, but whatever was, uh, but whatever's here is going to be the actual data that gets used. We specified 0 0.5, so it's going to be a 50% chance. Um, so yeah, this add he diff chance just corresponds directly to this add he diff chance. Where this is the thing def plague bullet. I'm going to go ahead and put a comment in here. Um, stores the data for infection chance and plague. And um, I think that this plague bullet is uh, slightly mislabeled since we could say he diff def of, we could make a gun that gives people asthma or a bad back or maybe a burn. I don't know if you can give them a bionic leg, but uh, we're going to, we're going to leave this as thing death plague bullet, but I just wanted to point out that, that names are, are just kind of important. And since we could change through data, what this plague bullet was, uh, maybe it should be called like disease bullet or something like that. And this particular one is a plague bullet. This particular one is configured to, to inflict the plague. All right, let's go back over here. Use thing desk to store valuable, to store variables of your classes, damage dash and other stuff. So we did that. Now we need to make the projectile. Projectile plague bullet. It's an ectech games not plague gun. We'll make it a public class. 
Actually, we're just going to copy his code. Hey, right, thank you for the follow. True Freak, welcome to the stream. This is kind of diverging from my normal stuff, but uh, we might do this if if there's if there's interest. Uh, we'll be doing this again tomorrow, pretty much all day, since uh, my work is throwing like a, a creative game jam type thing. Just a, a creative jam doesn't have to be a video game. We'll just copy this guy since we've changed our namespace a little bit. All right. So again, like C sharp doesn't know what a bullet is. Uh, we can come up here and type in using verse or using RimWorld to see where that's at. What are you complaining about? Can I convert thing def to be a reference conversion? Boxing, unboxing. Okay, hold on a second. And that complain? I didn't run into this issue. All right, this type of namespace named he diff def could not be found. That's interesting. Oh, I know. I think I know what this is. I do not know what this is. Let's go a little bit further. Rename the namespace play and give the class a title that matches your XML. Make a new class inherit the bullet class. We are. Anything weird about the bullet class? No. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, that's what the heck is this? this is our thing to plague bullet. Oh, I know why. Because we're not inheriting from bullet. All right. Let's make sure. Let's go back up here. Or not inheriting from thing def. So plague bullet is a thing def, right? Looking up here. I just copied this. So this is object-oriented programming. Um, we're making a new class. And it is a thing def. So it has all the properties of a thing def. So like I'm a person. So I have all like the attributes of a, uh, of a person. Um, so this thing def will have, let's go to definition and just look at it. It has all kinds of data that is set up to be important to a thing def. Um, as a projectile, it has, can be used under roof, uh, recoil relaxation, recoil power, all the things like apparently a thing def looks like it's kind of a superset of everything, but we inherit from thing def and oops. And that's why, so let's look at this error message again. Uh, we couldn't convert, cannot convert type thing def to, uh, first thing def to our thing def. Uh, the reason why it couldn't be used as a, uh, I wanna make sure I get my words right. The reason why, this couldn't be uh, converted over to our our class was because when it was like this, we didn't know, like the compiler doesn't know, hey, this is a thing def. You can treat it just like a thing def. So that's what this error message is, is telling you. All right, so we're back, back to no errors. Hit Control-Shift-B. 
All right, so we've got our bullet. We have our projectile. And now it wants us to open up IL Spy. Let's see what we got here. Get IL Spy off the Microsoft Store. Apparently, I didn't get that, but this should be lightning fast. Did you need to add a different reference? Uh, which uh, I, I missed chat when the. I'm already in Xbox Live. Shut up. Shut up. So basically I've searched for Isle Spy on the Microsoft Store. It's free. I said get it. And it opened up the Microsoft Store again. Yeah, so I'm going to get it a second time for fun. Now I own it. Now I'll install it. Which reference those namespaces are in. Um, so I'll just start talking and you can clarify your question if I don't get it. So these, uh, these namespaces came from uh, the assembly C sharp, the actual rim world assembly. Um, they have a few namespaces in them. I wonder which references deal the rim world and first namespaces you were using. I was just wondering which reference deal uh, the rim world and first namespaces you're Okay. Yeah. Then that's in the assembly C sharp. Uh, Unity Engine is uh, uh, that's a game engine that a lot of games are built on. HBS is a Unity shop. RimWorld was built with Unity. Uh, so, but RimWorld and Verse are both namespaces from the uh, RimWorld assembly, and it's just called Assembly Dash C Sharp, and that's because uh, by default, when Unity builds the uh, build your game files. That's just the name of the of assembly C sharp stuff. That's the name of the assembly it generates for your project. Good to know. Cool. All right, we got the we got the answer to your question. Uh, what were we doing? We were installing IL spy. Did we get it? We did it. Launch. All right. So what so .NET, uh, .NET languages normally, com uh, I don't want to say compile, maybe compile is the right word. Th this kind of terminology is what I'm not great at. What I'm great at is getting into code, solving problems, and debugging stuff. This kind of behind the scenes, under the hood stuff, not 100% familiar with, but I'll, I'll muddle through it for your benefit. So... Uh, C Sharp and other .NET languages will all compile to this IL, this intermediate language, uh, and and sit in that format and be ready to get compiled into assembly language to, to run on uh, your, your processor's architecture. Uh, but because it's sitting there in intermediate language, then there's a lot more information about that about the stuff so we get to do cool things so what we're going to do is do you remember we could look at our assembly that's not going to be very interesting because we have access to that source code but since rimworld shipped with this fancy dll here we can peek at it and what this is going to have is this will have all the different classes, all the different namespaces, everything that is a part of RimWorld. So you're asking where Verse and RimWorld were coming from, those namespaces. It's uh, this DLL right here. Can I like put an alias on this or something? No. Oh, well. Um, so he wanted us to look for a doomsday rocket launcher. I just hit control shift S or F I'm trying to call out. Um, I'm trying to call out different, uh, 
hotkeys as I'm doing them. And if I missed one, I'm sorry. So looking looking for Doom, it just looked all throughout this uh, assembly to find every instance of Doom. So it looks like there's a net pooled stream. Don't know what that is. Connection is doomed. I'm guessing uh, that's in the system assembly. So I'm guessing that's some sort of networking protocol and says, hey, this connection is no longer viable. Uh, this is a projectile doomsday rocket. Looks like this little parentheses out here tells me it's a function. Looks like it's inside this class, a uh, room world projectile doomsday rocket. And this guy over here is the class. Uh, see this little curly braces that to me signifies a class. All right. So. Well, uh, just uh, uh, just to plug Unity real quick, um, you don't have a lot of miles on Unity. Unity, I feel like, is a, is a great uh, a great gateway um, engine into game development. It uses real C sharp, um, and uh, it's it's a few it's a few iterations behind like cutting edge C sharp, but um, programming in C sharp, I think. Is a is a good skill even if you're not wanting to be in uh, into game development. If you wanted to go be a professional C sharp programmer, then that would be messing around with Unity will will kind of polish those skills and, and get the increase your XP as a as a C sharp developer as well. So it's just kind of neat. And Unity has all kinds of professionally done tutorials that are just part of the uh, uh, I think it's called Unity Learn. So super useful. All right. So we have, I've double clicked on Projectile Doomsday Rocket, the class itself. So we see public class, Doomsday Rocket. Looks like this inherits from projectile. I just clicked on projectile, but I want to come back a level. Um, so Doomsday Rocket is a projectile. So see the, again, that object oriented inheritance that we're getting some more properties. He wanted us to look at the impact. So one of the things you can do, like projectile has an impact method somewhere in here. Maybe, or maybe it's thing with comps. Did I miss it? Def, 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 def. Maybe I can go to can I do base.impact? Oh yeah. So not 100% sure what this is doing. Um, gin clamor, do clamor. Maybe this is a sound effect or something. The source, the float, the radius, and yeah, impact. Or maybe this is telling the AI Hey, a bullet just hit near you. Get the heck out of there. I, I'm not 100% sure. We're, we're, uh, I'm still learning the ins and outs of, uh, of RimWorld coding and modding. But pretty much, uh, let's go through the impact method. We are we're taking this as a parameter to the impact. So hit thing. This is a guess. I'm guessing that's the thing we hit. So map... Uh, we get a reference to our map. We hit our thing. We, we call our base methods, our parent methods, uh, impact to say, hey, I want you to handle the normal impact stuff. Still do that. But we're going to do something special here with this Doomsday rocket. We're going to do an explosion. And these are all these fields are like the, the methods or all the data that's going to trigger this explosion. Fill fuel. Uh, there's like an intended target stuff, explosion radius, all kinds of fun stuff that detail out what an explosion is. Um, base dot position. That's going to be the position of this rocket when it when it hits something. So my position, we're going to get a rect centered on this position that has a radius of five, and uh, we're going to make sure this rect 
exist only inside the boundaries of the map. So if it's right at the edge of the map, we don't want to try to hit stuff that's off the map. Um, might get us some null references there. And then now that we have that, uh, now that we have that, um, excuse me, now that we have that, um, that rect of basically a, a radius five area or Maybe that, yeah, five radius. So like either 10 by 10 or 11 by 11 rectangle, then we're going to pick three spots randomly in it and do a fire explosion. So that's extra stuff from a normal bullet. Normally a bullet's just going to um, uh, hit that target, apply some damage to it, things like that. But looks like a doomsday rocket is going to explode, have multiple explosions, there's an explosion radius of five and an extra explosion count of three. Um, I'm thinking probably like this is just an artifact of the uh, of the IL decompiling. Like we go from zero to three. I'm guessing since this is a constant, the IL just plugs that three there instead of putting that long variable name there. And then this five this explosion radius, I'm guessing that maps up with that. So this is one of those things where you don't, you don't get to see all of the interconnected pieces. Like the, the information that you get from IL spy is not perfect, but it's way better than, uh, looking at machine code from the olden days. Um, so we have this guy. He just wanted us to look at that to see how uh, how how the doomsday rocket and to show you what overriding was. So let's keep going. Add this code under properties. All right. So this is going into the projectile plague bullet. We'll look at the code over there. Let's see if he says anything again. Doesn't look like he is saying too much about that. And is this going in? I forgot where it's going. Projectile plate bullet. Projectile plate bullet. So if you put this code over in. Over in the other class, it would probably say a thing def, def, doesn't have an impact event. A bullet does, though. When you shoot a bullet, it's going to run into something and then play that impact event. So we're going to control dot here and say using verse. That's going to put a using up here. Uh, I'm guessing that random is probably... Oh, no, he's got his own version of random. Uh, here was something. So we have messages.message, .message, and then it takes this message sound. Wow, oh, just bit my tongue. Has this message sound parameter, but message sound doesn't exist. I hit control dot. We can generate a variable message sound. We can generate a type. So we can like code our own type, but we're calling into RimWorld stuff, and RimWorld uh, basically used to have this message sound, but doesn't have that anymore. Uh, if we go right click on definition to message, these are the um, these are the different uh, methods that are hanging off of this class. So we can send a text with a look target. We don't really have that. Um, we don't have a look target, so we're going to skip that one. Message def type. That's probably the one we're going to use. Or we could just say the message itself. Um, I don't wanted to use this message type def. That sounded more interesting. Okay. So a couple things going on here. Uh, what was it? Let's see. Message def 
meshes type def of dot uh, getting hit with a plague bullet seems like a negative health event so I'm gonna put that there and instead of this message sound thing we're gonna put that there all right now we have our uh, now we can go to the definition and we're going to be using this uh, we're going to be using this signature of the function these functions are all named the same but they take different parameters the one we're going to go to is uh, is this one with the parameters we've given it um, this here I'm going to go ahead and put this on its own line what no So this green line here is telling us something, like something's not right. I mouse over this and it says, hey, this is a deprecated function. You shouldn't be using this. Uh, you should be using translator formatted string extensions. I don't know how to do that. So uh, this was something I didn't figure out. So we're going to watch some live debugging action right here. What was it called again? Translator formatted string extensions. Hmm. All right. Say no. There's too many to go through that. Uh, all right, let's try to navigate through namespace instead. Let's look at this. Uh, da, 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 da. Steam, sound, profile, noise, grammar. Go to RimWorld. Whoo, that's a big boy. Live scrolling action. Transactor, transferable. Trigger, transport. Nope, don't see anything. Or transporter. All right, let's look up here. Let's look up at string. Stat, steel, stocks, story, string. Nope, not here. Let's look up translate. Don't care about that. Can I say don't go into assembly? There we go. Apparently rolled over to being a 12 month subscriber during a stream, my bad change, nice. Hanging out for a year, that doesn't seem right. We've been doing this for a year, Bronzite. Seems crazy. Well, thank you so much for the, the one year sub anniversary. I think you're my first. Yeah, I'm looking for, ooh, there we go. Does this sound right?
Use translator formatted string extensions. Uh, that's what we're using right now. Is there a named argument, named argument? What's a named argument? All right, let's 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 see if, I don't think we need to do this right now because I think we can get our stuff working without it. But as the key, is this the named argument? Let me look at named argument. Does it have a label? Ooh, it does. Okay, so maybe Launcher.label. We'll leave this like this for now. I'll uh, I'll dig into this on my own time. Uh, don't really care about localization right this second. Uh, but I think that means that we're ready to try to test. All right. This is another one of those error messages I was telling you about. Um, vector three is defined in an assembly that is not referenced. You must add a reference to the assembly Unity Engine core module. So earlier I told you to add that reference. Let's go ahead and browse. Unity Engine core module. Okay. And then make sure we do not copy local. Shablamo. All right, now for the big, the big test. See if uh, all this is gonna work. Maybe. No error messages is a great sign. Um, so one of the things you'll want to do when you're testing your mods is go into options, development mode. Make sure that development mode is checked. That gives you all kinds of access to all kinds of tools. Uh, I don't think you have to do anything special to set it up. I think it's just a standard option. But let's go into a new colony. This doesn't matter. Sure, we'll go peaceful we're a blacksmith excuse me all right and then ah, I forgot to start up my chat bot let me start that up now while I'm thinking about it so I can sure we'll go we'll land here right in the middle of the desert Great spot for a plague. Oops, not that one. Up here. Let's plug my Discord server in case anybody wants to talk about nerd stuff, programming, uh, RimWorld, Blood Bowl. Normally we do a bunch of... Uh, lately I've been on a Blood Bowl kick, but... Uh, I like talking game development and all kinds of other stuff and you'll be welcome to join. So I'm going to plug that Discord server if anybody wants to join. So we are generating a map. We're awake. Fall in on our, what do we call it? Our little drop pods gonna pause the game with the space bar open the debug actions let's see place try place near thing do, 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 do. do we have 
Oh no, we don't have a plague gun. Alright, I'm gonna ask my daughter where that was. Did we have the mod enabled? I thought we did. Spawn weapon? Maybe that's... No. Hmm. Maybe because we changed the name of it. Gun revolver, gun pump shotgun, gun triple rocket. Alright, something's not right, so we get to see what the heck's going on here. So we have Eck Bullet Play Gun, Play Gun Bullet. We have Eck Gun Play Gun. Interact Revolver, Weapon Revolver, all that fun stuff. Eck Tech Games Play Gun, Projectile Play Bullet. Let's make sure that looks right. Okay, both of those are correct namespaces. Let's make sure this is right. Projectile blade gun bullet. That is correct. Projectile plague bullet, overrides impact. I didn't see the error that I was expect one of the errors that I was expecting to see. Uh, one of the errors I was expecting to see was this guy right here. Oh wait, did we not build? No, we built. We built one more time. Let's just leave this as default. Override. What was it called? Resolve references. Edif of Edif def of plague. Uh, one of the re one of the errors I saw maybe it was because my daughter had the uh, has the expansions or something, but it said, "Hey, don't put this in uh, as a default parameter. Put it in a resolve references because he diff uh, he diff def of might not be loaded by the time uh, this default value gets set, and if so, then that's going to be a, a null value. So let's do that." Let's look one more time. Spawn weapon. We don't have egg, okay. I'm going to go ask my daughter to come up for just a second. All right, let's build this. It's this uh, right now, 755. Let's go ahead and build one more time. 756. Let's build one more time. 755, 756, whatever. Okay. Be right back. Hey, kiddo. Can you show me where you uh, spawned that uh, that weapon from the dev dev options? Yeah. I gotta fire it back up. Okay. I gotta fire it back up. So give me a second. Yeah, let me know. Oh, we're coming right up on time, and hopefully we'll get this working right now. Uh, da, 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 da. 
mods is it oh helps if you turn on your mod apparently it wasn't turned on so that was probably the problem kiddo but if you don't mind standing by for your expertise why of course kaylee and i worked through this earlier on her computer so a special thanks to kaylee for helping uncover all the out-of-date spots on the tutorial. Let's see, New Colony. Crash landed, Cassandra. Or a settlement. Ooh, we got the plague gun. Also, these were two mods that we were trying out. The Harmony is a... A special like mod utility that lets you transpile and change uh, implementations of functions by having like pre hooks, post hooks, and just wait a minute. Is it spawn weapon? Spawn direct thing. Spawn direct thing. Try place direct thing. Try place direct thing. And plague. Let's just type in plague. Oh baby, look at that. Ooh, we got a legendary one. All right, let's do that. So you, you get drafted. What are your skills? Shooting four? Sure. Cool, baby. Oh, cool, cool. All right, and we will not shoot the doggo, but this Henry guy, he has pestered, or Chris. We'll shoot Chris. Okay. So plague bullet failure moat. I think the reason why it's looking like this is because it was a translation. Whoa, that's just keeps going and going. Um, uh, because we called the translation function, but we don't have a translation yet. So it has like all the special accent stuff. So you can still kind of read it. I think that's just a feature of it. So we had a failure mode. Let's go ahead and shoot him again. All right, another failure. Bam, all right. Well, hopefully. Plague bullet success message. So we just got colonist needs treatment because he just got infected with the plague. And right now it's just a 20% chance, but we shoot him a few more times. Yep. Got him. Another success message. Now it's up to, oh, I didn't see what it was. I thought it was 20%. Now it's up to 45%. So looks like the plague gun is working. Huzzah! Uh, one thing we didn't do is we didn't actually look through that code of what was going on. So I'd like to do that. Basically, we just monkey saw, monkey did this uh, impact method. So we're calling our, our parent method to say, hey, do, do the normal bullet hit thing. Uh, but we're going to do some extra stuff. Null checking is very important in room world. 99% of errors board or from null reference exceptions. Make sure your code checks if things actually exist before they try to use the code that belongs to said things. That being said, uh, if something's not supposed to be null, don't null check it. Just use that thing. Uh, if you null check everything, uh, even when stuff's not supposed to be null, what that can wind up doing is hide real errors. Um, say, uh, Say I had a mech and he has a, a weapon, a large laser, but he doesn't have a uh, he doesn't have like a weapon def for that large laser. It's set to null. And I say, hey, fire the large laser, and it does fire. But it does a null check and it says, okay, I fired, and then there's no damage. And you don't really notice that at first. And then eventually you see, hey, eventually you'll notice in this big barrage of fire that the large laser wasn't doing anything. And you're like, how is that even possible? 
because of that null ref safety check, you've def you've defended against a, an invalid case. Uh, if you would have just crashed loudly, then it would have said, hey, I tried to shoot this guy with my large laser, but I don't have I don't have a definition for that. Then you can go fix that bug. In Nick, in this case, um, hit thing. Uh, maybe like I don't know how RimWorld works. Maybe hitting some things isn't really a thing. So maybe they would pass null into that. Like if you hit a um, maybe a wall isn't a thing. It probably is. Or or maybe the ground isn't a thing. Um, then if the ground's not a thing, then yes, that's a null check that we, we should be doing. But this guy right here, um, since this is a projectile plague bullet and we're going to return our def as a plague bullet. This one I don't think should be null checked, um, but I'm going to leave it here uh, in the in the default checked in version of this tutorial. So we have um, have these null checks to make sure. Hey, are we um, this hit thing? Uh, is this hit thing a pawn? And we're going to declare a variable hit pawn and store. If, if that winds up being true, if it is a pawn, then inside here we're going to have this, this hit pawn variable. Rand, we're going to get a random value. It's between 0 and 100%. So right now we have it set to 0.5, right? So if rand is less than or equal to the def dot add he diff chance, um, we set it to 100. percent That was a, that was a good example. Like I set this to 100 percent here, but we saw several times that when the bullet was hitting things, it wasn't actually infecting every time. And that's because just to just to reiterate, the default was set to one, but the actual value was 0.5. Um, if I change this to one, then that's going to actually change the data in the game. So basically we're set getting the, uh, we pick a number from zero to one. Right now this is 0 0.5. So if this is like 0 0.2, then yes, this is, if it's gonna pass, if it's greater than 0 0.5, then it's not. Uh, messages, this is using a, um, oh, thanks for the heart. Otters hold hands. Welcome to the stream, by the way. Uh, so messages is a uh, is a way to send different messages in the game. Um, we are using an obsolete or deprecated translate function. We need to use a different translate function, but I'm not going to do that here because we're running up on the end of my stream here. Uh, what else is going on? This is also a fancy way of saying um, if the hit pawn is not null and his health is not null and his he health differential set is not null, then get the first health differential of the he diff to add. It was configured to be plague. Um, and then add some random severity to it, a random range between 0.15 and 0.30. And then the plague on pawn is Verity. These null checks, I don't think are good. E probably not good either. Um, like we've already said, is this a hit pawn? If it is, then we should be able to use that pawn. Um, I assume that every pawn has a health pool. Maybe they don't though. Like maybe uh, there's like invulnerable pawns out there where health is null or something like that. I, I, I'm still too new to, to RimWorld to, to say, but this, this is, it smells of defensive programming. So I'm not, not a fan. Um, so if the plague on pawn is not null, this is a good plague, uh, a good null check because an individual pawn may or may not have the plague. And th basically this is saying, Hey, 
hey pawn give me your first health differential of plague all right if they had the plague room world is a uh, coded funding <laughs> room world is cool and uh i want to say that um uh the amount that has been data driven in this game is amazing um i'm really impressed by the code i haven't been looking at it very long but uh tynan is that his name uh, he seems like a, a really smart guy and uh, uh, seems to know what he's doing. He's made a, a really cool game that's been overwhelmingly positive on uh, Steam. This this code right here, though, is from a, uh, a tutorial that we're following. Uh, but yeah, Plague on Pawn may be... Uh, a, a Pawn may have the Plague or may not. If they do have the if they do have the plague, then we're going to increase its severity by a random amount. If they don't have the plague, then we're going to make a health differential of plague, give it that random severity, and add it to that hit pawn. All right. So this was did the did the bullet select successfully deliver its um, its plague packet? Did it infect the pawn with plague? Yes. Otherwise, we didn't infect the pawn with plague. Um, but, uh, so, normally you wouldn't do anything like this, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we wanted to say... Uh, uh, we, we wanted to show that, that, yes, our plague gun was wired up. And yeah, we were trying to do things with it. So this message says, hey, post a message that the uh, that the pawn got infected with the plague. And this one says, hey, j just throw up some text to let us know that our, our mod is working. He spent a ton of time communicating with the community with that last DLC. Changed huge parts of the code to make us happy. Yeah, Tynan seems like a, a really good guy. He's a... Uh, um, he's made a, 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 a game that I've spent hundreds of hours on my wife, my daughter, we've all had tons of fun playing it. So super cool. And it, it seems like he has, a um, a good line of communication with the, uh, with the players of his game. He seems to be active on the forums and I was always really impressed by what he was able to do. But anyway, um, these couple of things I think are keys into uh, into the localization system to translate stuff, and that's why you saw those weird um, those weird messages. One, we're not using the correct system. I need to figure out that on my own, but we're running out of time here tonight, and I want to go eat some dinner. Um, what else? And then over here, uh, we have made our new, we have made our plague gun. We made it down to the translations part. I'm uh, probably not going to worry about that for my creative jam tomorrow, but we'll see. Uh, late comers to the stream, my company, Hairbrain Schemes, the company I work at, not my company. Uh, they have um, creators of the most recent Shadowrun games and turn-based Battletech game. They're doing a creative jam, an internal creative jam where people are getting to do whatever the heck they want for a day and a half and just mess around learning something creative. And I decided, hey, I'll mess around with RimWorld modding. So tomorrow morning, I'll be back. I'll be doing the streaming. Um, and it looks like the rest of this was set up for the localization system. I haven't read this or worked through that off stream, so not going to do that. The couple of... I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, but it's going to start around somewhere between 8 and 10 uh, Eastern time AM and then working on through the afternoon. I'll probably be streaming almost all of it. I uh, might take a break just to give my, give my voice a rest, but uh, that's the plan for Thursday and Friday morning. We're going to do more of the same. And then later that evening, we're going to be doing presenting stuff. But I think the presenting stuff is going to be private. And let's see what else. I think that's going to be it for tonight. 
again, special thanks to Jersel or Jessrel, Jacrell, J E Krell. Who the heck knows how to pronounce this? He was nice enough to put this to put this tutorial together five years ago, and it still held up pretty well. Are you using one dot one version of the play gun? Uh, no, I just I followed this tutorial and uh, and worked through the issues. So one of my plans, uh, one of the outputs of this was I was hoping to like update the uh, update the wiki uh, for the tutorial. Yeah, the one on the wiki. I saw this guy at the very end. Where's the damn wiki link? Yeah, I saw this and it basically said it was, this page is obsolete for the current version of RimWorld and it's kept as a resource. Oh, oh, okay. Thanks, Otters. Sorry, I didn't see, uh, I wasn't on Discord really when I was streaming. I think what happens, yeah, I saw you had posted that earlier, but I, I went ahead and just worked through, the, um, since I was working through the old one with my daughter offline, um, yeah. yeah, that would have been useful. I'll post a link to that here as well. Yeah, if this one's up to date. Oh uh, yeah, it's got the supported versions. Does it say use .NET 4? It's actually a PNG, that's cool. Well, maybe this video wasn't super useful, but <laughs> um, I think it'll help my uh, the people that I'm gonna be teaching read blind leading the blind uh how to rim world mod then uh i felt like it was a, a good exercise yeah the older version was more detailed that's cool that's cool yeah there weren't too many mess ups uh since i have a a, a programming background then i was able to quickly figure out what the heck was going on Ooh, thanks for the follow. A bad tanker. I'm about to be heading out to dinner here, but I'll send one more plug of my Discord channel. And let's see if I can find somebody to offload you people to. Is anybody doing some RimWorld? Had fun hanging out, everybody. We're going to be doing this again tomorrow. D&D is currently on hold, so Saturday is going to be more Blood Bowl. But if I'm streaming almost all day tomorrow and Friday, I might take Saturday off. Just depends. Okay. Continuing from last night, we made it down to translations and the localization stuff. And I just wanted to go through that. One thing that... um happened yesterday was the where the heck was it no plague bullet there we go the the way we were doing the translation stuff it was complaining about hey this is a this is an obsolete method are you not going to do it for me now This was totally complaining about it being deprecated. Hold on a second. There we go. This one was complaining about being deprecated. So translator.translate, uh, it's obsolete. Use the formatted string extensions. So the only thing I did was I changed this over from this translate extension method to uh, this guy. 
Um, I split apart the lines so there were two different things. This is a call to messages.message. And this first parameter was like the translation, so I've just split that up into two lines. Now we have the translated message equals this guy. And I'll just show you the code real quick. And how I found out how to do this was I just searched for that exact error message, the, the thing that showed up. Took a little bit of digging, but found a site that uh, a modding site that was had had an example for this. And basically you pass it the key. We changed the name of the key since we were uh, doing stuff like that earlier. So now it's ECK, blah, blah, blah. And these are two parameters that this message are going to use. Come down here and did the same thing. So instead of moat maker, um, again, we're just doing the translate message and what this is, is this is a key lookup for, hey, Snowman, Fire Dog Forge. Welcome to the stream, sir. Um, for all your Fire Dog Forge needs, Kent is a blacksmith, and uh, feel free to plug your website, sir. You can tell my twos of viewers that, uh, that you're a blacksmith and make custom blacksmithing stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, so the only thing I did was I uh, converted this method over to the new translate method. And uh, also this was 12 seconds. That moat that got that got displayed was uh, stayed on the screen forever. So I just changed it to two seconds instead. Um, this by itself doesn't do anything. This just says, hey, use the key that I provided you. But it, we didn't go through that. So let's go through that too. Um, in our mods folder, we need to make a languages, an English folder, and a keyed folder. So boop, boop, boop. I'll show you what that looks like. So we make a new folder, languages, new folder, English, new folder, keyed, then make a new file. Uh, what do you call it? Plague gun underscore keys XML. What this is named, I don't think is important. I th it may need to be play gun uh, for the play gun mod. I don't think so. I think it just needs to be an XML file in this in this folder. And then he told us to do this right here. Make a new XML file. Make sure you have your this thing up here. And the only thing I did was I changed. Uh, we have to make sure these keys match. So instead of ECK, instead of TST, I've changed them over to ECK. And again, that's just to prevent collisions with other mods that are doing this. Oh, failure, zero percent chance. So remember how I said there were parameters? Like the top message was the success message, and the bottom message was the failure message. Here, there we go. So coming back to the C sharp side of things, we're translating this message. Here's the key. Oh, yeah. Here's the key, and you'll see that the Egg Plague Bullet success message uh, maps exactly with. Where'd my text editor go? Boop. Maps exactly with this one, and see this little curly brace zero, curly brace one. This means the first parameter that you pass in is going to be substituted there and the second parameter is going to be passed in there. So this is like a kind of a Mad Lib. Oh, there's Fire Dog Forge's site. Very cool. Um, so it's, it's like a, a fill in the blanks. So somebody infected somebody with the plague. I'm coming back over here to the code. So the launcher, the guy that shot the, the pawn that shot this, is the first parameter. So let's say Eck is shooting Kent with the, the play gun. Eck shot Kent. Back here. Eck infected Kent with the plague. There you go. Simple as that. Uh, down here we have um, a parameter for the failure and 
normally you probably wouldn't have this in a, in a mod, but just to show that uh, stuff is working, even when it's not doing anything, because there's a random chance to infect the person with the with the uh, with the plague. Um, let's look at one more thing. Yeah, see how we say it's with the plague? We could change this a little bit. Let's do that. So now I want to say that we take three parameters on the sec success parameter. And what's that third one going to be? Where's the... So some stuff has been hard coded to plague and we've called it plague gun. But uh, as I pointed out in the previous video, really this is a health differential gun um, and it happens to be configured for, for plague. Da, da, da. The he diff to add dot, do we have like a name or? Label, label noun pretty, sound. let's just do label. So now, lowercase label, does it need to be uppercase label? Is there an uppercase label? Nope, lowercase label, all right. So now it should say, hey, it'll still probably say plague, but if we came back here to our hmm. So this is kind of hard coded to plague, but we could say malaria. Let's let's I'm pretty sure this is gonna work. So let's let's switch it over to malaria. Um, we might be able to, um, we might be able to make it so we could drive this from the XML files. Um, so right now, we're directly referencing this plague bullet, but we might be able to, I don't know, we got he diff to add plague. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, I'm not sure. This, this is getting a little bit tricksy, so I'm actually gonna abort here. Uh, but actually, no, let's, let's see what it looks like. Um, we've, we've changed it over to malaria. Over here, it's actually saying plague. But I think because we're resolving references, it's going to force it to malaria. So let's give that a go and see what happens. This might blow up. Who the heck knows? Is there a way to have it display a random plague from an LOV? What's an LOV? Level of something? Happier list of values. Hmm. Um, yeah, you could have like a uh, a random like a random list of uh, infectious things and maybe pick that. Oh, let's see. Since we have dev tools on, we can spawn a weapon, the plague gun. Spawn a whole bunch of those. Jeremy, you have officially gone crazy. 
And nope, you're incapable of violence, so you're not crazy. Genevieve. Could not resolve symbol two for string zero. Alright, we missed something up. Did I? This looks like that should work, right? Def heat if to add label. And then the XML file looks like this. Oh, did I forget to build? Let me see. Assemblies, play gun, that's 1035, it's 1046. Yep, yeah, that's the old one. So I forgot to build. Sorry about that. So every time we build, it automatically moves the uh, moves the DLL into place. So let's go ahead and delete that bad boy and make sure. Control Shift B. That's definitely the new one. Try that. So have you ever played RimWorld before, Zenak? Rada. Nope. That's a fun little game. It's a, a very streamlined Dwarf Fortress, uh, and sci-fi instead of medieval. So looks like this person got stabbed in the eye. They're beautiful and jealous. I, I love how like random stuff just kind of evokes stories for you. So this is a beautiful person that's jealous and has a stab in the in their right eye. So. Already I'm thinking that this this lady's seen some things and got into a jealous lover spat and took a knife to the eyeball. And it's a colony management thing. Mostly you're, uh, you can set the priorities and everybody will do their own thing, but you can specifically uh, take over a pawn and tell them to do certain stuff. Do -do. Spawn weapon. Egg gun, plague gun. Alright, jealous, beautiful woman. Pick up that masterwork plague gun and start shooting your buddies. Okay. So we've changed the, uh, oh, check it out. So infected the animal farmer with malaria. So now if we come here, uh, now if we come here and look at her health, we'll see that she has a little bit of malaria. Get the ban hammer. Oh, nice. Real GTA 5 Gorilla, thank you. Ban. Uh, gorilla. Uh, bot. Selling viewers. Burp. Can I report that? Does that also report it them? I don't know. Ah. Hold on one second. Thank you for the good luck wishes, Bronzite, from the Discord. <clears throat> I'll figure that out I'll, after stream, I guess. But uh, as you can see, that that uh, that stuff's working now. 
And I think that's it for, I think that wraps up our plague gun stuff. I'm going to do one thing. I'm actually going to change this to not do that. I'm not going to specify any default here. And then I'm going to, let's try one more thing. Uh, undo. What's another disease here? the flu. So I want to try, I don't know if this, ooh. the hard coding this to play. Emo only chat is on. What? How did I do that? There we go. Thank you. That would have been terrible. Uh, instead of hard coding this to plague solely from the data. Thanks, Zinek. I need to make you a moderator if you're going to actually be doing moderator things. Can I do that? Can I promote you? Can block you. I can mod Fire Dog Forge. There you go. You're a moderator. You did it. I trust you won't abuse your newfound power. And then, so yeah, let's make sure we build. It's 1052. 1052. All right. And now in our defs. Instead of this being plague, he diff to add, let's call it flu. All right, and that will, so saved that. And let's change this up to instead of 15%, let's say 75%. The power! Well, I think the only one, only other person in here is Snow Moon, so I know you're not going to ban her because that would forego any future cookies. And that's just not going to happen. No, not load game. I'm streaming. I'm not. You've been getting grief for not streaming more? You should stream more. Oh, don't ban, uh, don't ban Wazimog either. <laughs> he is also a, an HBS employee. And he decided to join the RimWorld team for a little bit at least. If he doesn't switch back to real work. But he shouldn't. He should keep. He should do something creative. <laughs> uh, make a game. I think I like at that HPS place. Yeah, that BattleTech game. It's pretty slick. Go to dev mode. Spawn a weapon. The play gun. Hopefully this will Ooh, a legendary gun. Kevin, get in there. Robbie has pissed you off for the last time. Yep, so that's really cool. Uh, the Kevin scientist infected Robbie, surgeon, with the flu. So we just uh, did that. Very neat. So yeah, a couple of adjustments to, uh, let me make a note in, uh, 
let's see. When going through the... What's the name of that? What class was that? Thing to have plague bullet class. Call out. What am I calling out? The uh, Like in the uh, resolve references method. Video edits. All right, that's cool. And then I think that's going to do it for our. That's going to do it for our plague gun. So are we still doing the plague? Nope, we're doing flu. Let's do plague. <clears throat> and then, uh, let's see. Let's also do a notes. This project is hard to deploy to my thermal directory. Project settings, build. Set to your build mod folder for your plague gun. Mine is here. Yours probably won't be. There we go. Uh, let's see, and then lurk mode meeting starting. All right, stay safe. Don't work too hard today, Kent. All right. Ooh, there's already a readme. Maybe we'll put this in here. Get rid of you. change that go to project settings build set output path to your remote mom follow play gun mine is here yours probably won't be there we go uh, and then also since we're here chakrell Um, to 
to How to play Rim World on step by step post located here. Anything I don't want to add, I don't think so. Yeah, status. Got localization working. And I'll go ahead and put a link to this repo. Is my repo. Bloop. It's a GitHub. There she is. I'll right, go ahead and post a link here. That's going to do it for that. I'm going to stop the video for a second. <laughs>